Hello, welcome back once again. It's time to bring you those options, bring you those frustrations to your RPG table. GM face palm episode. Uh, what I'm going to talk about today is a quick little update, and then uh, I'm going to go to a revisit of the Blood of uh, Primates. It's not something published by Pathfinder. Uh, just uh, one of my little uh, takes on the Blood of series, if you were to choose the Venara Heritage's uh, Heritage. And uh, I talked about that in a, in a past video, and I've refined it, I've, I've, I've cleaned it up quite a bit, and I'm going to introduce uh, two new races today, uh, which will be the uh, Durhi the uh, winged uh, ape and then the uh, Shara Ka uh, very small uh, very fast, very crazy wild uh, abyssal like uh, primate uh, yeah so you might recognize these from uh, Ser uh, Serpent Skull uh, from the adventure path, uh, primarily takes place around Grund, I believe. Uh, but yeah, I'll begin to that in a moment here. But uh, I made quite a few updates. Uh, if you check out my Google Plus, you can see which updates I made. Uh, otherwise, you can go into the comments section for the uh, other videos. Uh, those detail in the Formian, the Bargob. The Gebite, the Kappa, the Mana Waste Mutant, and more importantly, the Unfettered Eidolon. I made a video about that, and there was some controversy over it. Uh, very quiet, very uh, remote controversy. It's a very obscure channel, but uh, you know, I, I do get some. Uh, feedback from from people uh, and going into it I, I knew that there were some overpowered uh, things there uh, even making a post on the Paizo boards and you know there's usually some heavy criticism there um, but I went back through it and uh, I got it down to nine racial points uh, I think I sort of brought more option to it uh, kind of refined a few a few things uh, trying to make it more of a universal uh, race one that you get to customize uh, going off of that great story of you know unfettered Edelon uh, during during that that point where the summoner dies perhaps tragically and then that connection from Edelon and summoner is forever severed and then the great wealth of opportunity there to uh, bring about a very compelling story, uh, very, very rich, very, very full, uh, as far as RP is concerned. Uh, basically, having a race that you determine what it looks like, uh, very unusual, very uh, unique, uh, something that would be detached, depressed maybe, have a sort of childlike approach to things, a wonder, a timidness, as it sort of learns about about this new strange realm, uh, instead of getting shunted to its uh, home plane. But I really like the artwork I found on one of the, um, uh, the Paizo has a few uh, short stories they, they put out on, on online available to read. And one of them was with uh, Salem, that character uh, featured in the Redemption Engine, which just came out, which is a Pathfinder novel, and then one that I had actually read a while back, which was Death's Heretic. Uh, there's a short story on online uh, dealing with him uh, during his earlier travels, and he came across a Elon, not, not one that was unfettered, but 
one that you kind of got a sense of a story from, a personality was imprinted pretty str strongly as far as what you could see as far as an insight, an outlook on how you could probably run it. But I really like this image a lot. I think it went with what I made for the unfettered Edelon. Just how ha just having a character like like that, just very unusual, very unique. Uh, some that stood out, uh, something that you could tell was a evolving creature, one that was coming into its own 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 right as uh, trying to establish itself and in, in its place in Gal uh, Galarian. So. I really like that image, and uh, I presented a lot of great things with it, as far as what kind of base form you want, and then giving you the choice whether you want to have uh, arms to use manufactured weapons, or if you rather do claws, uh, more of a bestial aspect in terms of it fighting unarmed, or something with like a monk capability. But then I provided a list of unfettered Edelon evolutions where you're allowed to pick one of these upon race creation. So I got a little bit of that there. And I really like the alternate racial trait I made for it, which is called Dual Mind, where it was thought that the connection to the summoner in Edelon was severed, but in reality it was altered dr drastically where there is a t sort of twin consciousness that exists and there are some benefits from that. So yeah, if you want, just go to the YouTube video for, for the Unfettered Eagle and you can check out this. I posted all the updates for the races I've done in the comments. So if you're curious on that, I finally got the un e Unfettered e Eagle on fixed. I really like this version a lot better, and I received a lot better positive feedback from people on it. Um, I did the Formian, Mana Waste Mutant, all, all that stuff. So uh, so now, we'll get right into the Blood of Primates. Alright, here we go. Computer side to turn back on. Okay. So, with the Blood Primates, uh, I really want to uh, delve further into that very, very short alternate option of a, I believe they call it a white, white cape. And looking at that real quick in the Advanced Race Guide. The Imanara 206. They give you one type. I get it, there's so many races in here, but I wanted to extend upon this. I love Planet of the Apes. I love the newer ones uh, that, that come out and uh, one that will be here soon. Uh, I can really get lost in those movies. Uh, but yeah, just this white cape is the alternate racial trait here. Um, that placed them more as savannah dwelling baboons uh, rather than jungle dwelling monkeys. Uh, I wanted to take on more of those aspects of what different types there are as far as their ancestry. You don't really see one in there that looks like a gorilla or if you want to do something like a howler monkey, a night monkey, a snow monkey, Orangutan, ring-tailed lemur, spider monkey, baboon, or maybe more of a catapest uh, type of uh, sudden. So, what I did was I listed a few Venar heritage and dubbing it blood of uh, prime, uh, pri primates. Uh, so I gave you ability modifiers so you could pick different types. Uh, gave you their regions. And then some of them are going to be listed as there are ones that are alternate racial trait, where, you, where it tells you what you have to swap out. Other ones, which were sort of in this mesh between being an alternate and a var uh, variant race, to where instead of it being an alternate racial trait, 
uh, it's an additional racial trait, so you don't have to swap anything out. Uh, you gain something extra uh, that stays true to the ancestry, while at the same time staying within that power grid, not going above it as far as uh, racial points. So I think I did quite well on this. Uh, I think I explored every opportunity there for presenting diff uh, different types. So uh, I'll post those again once I get this video up here. But I talked about Gorilla, where they get cor uh, cornered Fury. Uh, Howling Cape, which is a howler monkey, where they get that gu uh, gu uh, guttural howl to unnerve or intim intimidate others. Uh, suggesting they might be from Ustalav. Then we got the Night Cape, where... Uh, they get dark vision, and maybe you can find them in Ustalav or the Dark Lands, the Uranitane, uh, which are smarter types, uh, naturally inquisitive about the world, so I gave them curio uh, curiosity as a alternate. And most of these alternates, uh, they're going to have the prehensile tail removed, since in all actuality they do not have uh, those. I suggested that the orange cape or the orangutan came from Tianzia. Uh, we get the ring cape, which are the ring tail lemurs. So I gave them the jumper trait. And although the prehensile tail is removed, they still, in effect, have it, but does not function as a prehensile tail, which is actually uh, how it is. We got the spider cape, gave them terrain sprinter. Uh, white cape, which is more of a baboon, so they get a bite. Suggests they came from Katapesh. And we got the winter cape, which are the snow monkeys. And, uh, uh, they suffer no harm from being in cold environments. When in conditions of severe cold, they can attempt a fortitude save per hour instead of every ten minutes. And I suggested that they are from Tianzia. So we, so we have those. Uh, I think they're pretty solid. Uh, now we have the Sharu Ka. Uh, if you're familiar with uh, Serpent Skull, you would know these creatures. And uh, let's pull up the image for this. It's a little bad boy here. I think that's pretty awesome. There's a lot of great artwork. Yeah, artwork in the um, AP for uh, Serpent Skull. And uh, I could just see these swinging tree from tree. Uh, no hesitation at all. Uh, fierce. Uh, I could see them being a barbarian class easily. Uh, but I placed them at 14 racial points. So they can be saddled along uh, things such as Asmars and t uh, t uh, Tieflings as far as being within that racial uh, power group. Uh, they're quite interesting. They're small sized. Uh, they can climb as well as move uh, base speed. Uh, what's interesting, they have low light vision and dark vision. They gain a uh, bite, which is only 1d3 damage, but still, if you're wielding manufactured weapons and you got that se uh, secondary attack there, you got the Shrieking uh, Frenzy, which is a supernatural ability where they can get into a Shrieking state, where they can't uh, cast spells, uh, fail stealth checks, but function as if under the haste spell. Butter stagger for one round, uh, three rounds after. And then you got the Throne Weapon Map Mastery, which is uh, basically like having two static bonus seats in one. So they uh, also have that. So they can uh, throw anything as a bonus feat. Uh, and they also get the improved critical feat for uh, Throne Weapons. 
but they limit to where it, it can't stack with any other thing that would expand upon the threat range. So we still have that bal balance there uh, as far as, you know, uh, starting out with a group of level 1s, level 2s. And what I found interesting is they begin to play speaking Abyssal and Polygot. They have high charisma, or yeah, high intelligence scores. Uh, they can choose from common, goblin, undercommon, and uh, Venara. And as far as alternates, I gave them Scent, where we replace uh, Dark Vision, and then if they want, uh, instead of uh, maybe their stealthier cousins, who would receive a plus four racial bonus on stealth checks, and this would replace the Shrieking Frenzy. So if you were not too keen on that, you could uh, swap that out and get a plus four racial bonus on stealth. If you have different tactics that uh, don't involve charging right in with reckless abandon. So we got that. Um, I listed that there's a, um, a feat called, or not, yeah, a feat, uh, Death from Above, which is an ultimate combat where um, if you charge on higher ground or flying, you get a plus five bonus on attack rolls in place of other bonuses. Uh, for charging and being on higher ground. And then I gave this one called Bratchiate. I called it like a leaf on the wind. Firefly reference, maybe. Uh, what You can move your climb speed through treetops by leaping from tree to tree, so long as the trees are no more than 10 feet apart and your hands are empty. So we got that. Um, I wouldn't give that to Venara since they don't have a climb speed. As far as I'm aware. I believe so, anyway. I didn't come across that. Venara, Venara, Venara. Yeah, I didn't come across anything with climb. Oh, yeah, they do have climb speed. Okay, never mind. Good thing I checked. That's why I had this. Nagging uh, persistence in the back of my mind saying maybe they do. So, okay, they can use that, that feat as well. So, we got a feat for all the primates there. I came across that, and I think it was in Tome of Horrors 4, maybe? So, I like that, so add that to it. But yeah, so you have that available to you if you want. Uh, I did respond to someone in the Paizo forums that asked about having something like that. Um, so I was able just to throw that up there right away. Uh, I think a Kuru, uh, it's a cannibal-like hu uh, humanoid, which uh, popped up in one of the either player companion book or a campaign setting book for uh, something detailing the uh, Skull and sh uh, Shackles AP, uh, Kuru, K-U-R-U. -U. I think these two types would go well together in a, in, in, in a group. Uh, this Sharu Ka could be pretty good, and I imagine a uh, pirate game being able to swing around the uh, Riggin. Alright, now on to a very, very impressive uh, specimen here, uh, race, the Durhi, if I'm saying that right. Uh, really, really, really awesome. And they made their appearance in uh, Serpent's Skull, I believe. Um, and they're also listed in Beast Area 3. Just to show you a picture on that one. It's just, it's really awesome. It's very formidable. Uh, it just looks fierce. Uh, yeah, look at that thing. Just awesome. Very, very powerful creature, and already you got that huge wingspan to it. I think they're around uh, 9 feet tall and weigh about 400 pounds. Just vicious. I mean, I think it's stand up pretty well with a uh, minotaur and most things. So I'm definitely going to include that creature uh, with the large size races that I've started to work on. Uh, so, yeah, you can have, you know, giants and... Um, ogres and things of that, and you just 
deer heat would be really, really awesome. Uh, so I have that for you as well. Uh, it is very high on the power level, not as high as you would expect with, you know, a drone noble or a dryer or anything like that. It's not as, as blown up. Uh, I put them about 24 racial points. And obviously there are some things that you can take off if you want to uh, lower that. But I got them starting off as a monstrous humanoid, large in size. I really don't think you should do the power, the powerful build, um, unless there's a very, very strict uh, aspect in, in in your game as far as playing large sized. Uh, base speed would be normal, standard. Uh, I went with plus two to strength, plus two to con, minus two for intelligence. And some of you may think, well, why is it only just a plus two strength? Well, I think the other part of their strengths should should come from their from from their size, uh, and they, and they do get that for being large. They get a plus two uh, bonus to uh, strength in relation to their size. So I think that really reflects that. Uh, that's why I did the same thing with the Minotaur as well. I I, I believe I put just just a pl uh, plus two for strength because they will also get an additional plus two. Uh, due, due to their size. So, that's just my re reason and behind it. Um, uh, defense racial traits I put on natural armor. They get a climb speed, they get flight. <laughs> uh, natural attack to slam with their mighty fists. Dark vision, no cost since they're monstrous humanoid. And then as an alternate racial trait, I gave them scent. Uh, before they speed, I called it adaptable speed. Uh, Dury have a base speed of 30 feet, a climb speed of 20 feet, and a fly speed of 50 feet with average maneuverability. Uh, so you can imagine as they're coming towards you, uh, they're getting what little flight they can. If there's a thick canopy just above them, I imagine they'd use some of the, that, that, that wingspan Sort of to give them sort of, sort of sort of a gust, a a bonus or whatever to to, to jump, maybe grabbing onto a branch and push it or propelling themselves forward. So just a very adaptable, very maneuverable uh, uh, force there. Uh, however, the deer here listed as that they can fly in the beast area. Uh, 60 feet with poor manu uh, maneuverability. Uh, now, if you want to have that be represented here, uh, it just seems strange to do that since just the the uh, Strix, that black feathered uh, uh, humanoid race that has the flight as well. They have a very, very, very powerful fl uh, flight speed, and I believe their maneuverability is good or average or something like that. Um, so it, it just seems weird to give the Durhi poor uh, maneuverability, especially when uh, they can fly very, very far. Uh, so, and then, and then also trying to go along with what's presented in the uh, racial points for flight. Um, so what I did was I just met it in the middle without having to uh, tamper with that too much. So really, uh, the average maneuver maneuverability was 50 feet. And I gave that uh, plus 8 cost there on flight. And if you're curi uh, curious about flight, I did have it all listed out as far as what the ra uh, racial point costs are for that. Um, flight for plus 4 uh, cost. You get a fly speed of 30 feet with Clumsy. Uh, flight for a plus 6, it would be 40 feet with poor maneuverability. Uh, flight for 8 would be 50 feet with average maneuverability. And a flight for 10 would be a uh, speed of 60 feet and good. So, uh, if you wanted to actually have the points match what's in the beast theory, then I would say... It'd probably be a plus eight then, where they would have a fly speed of 60 feet with poor maneuverability. Um, so I would say plus, uh, plus plus eight to that. It's a little weird to do to do it like that, so I admit it 
where uh, I didn't have too much of a disadvantage, disadvantage there. <clears throat> Just because of their uh, capabilities that they have. Uh, let's see. Anything else I can talk to you about? Uh, the languages. Uh, Dury he began play speaking Common and Orin. Uh, Dury with high intelligence scores can choose from the following Abyssal, Celestial, Draconic, Elven, Sylvan, and Venara. I listed their boom their booming voice as a feat. Uh, I gave them brat brachiite. So they could swing through the trees through the trees. Uh, Death from above, which is a uh, source from all ult ultimate combat. Um, that knockdown feat that they have. Um, I think it's just a special ability they have, so it's actually not a feat, but I made it a feat. Um, that's all I got for that. Uh, the only thing I didn't list in here or put in there was the aerial charge, where uh, you get the same kind of bonus for charging when you're uh, flying. That's not really in Pathfinder, and the only thing that came close to finding something like that was with a third-party publisher um, that came off as, as, as a feat. So... Uh, since you already have the one death from above in ultimate combat, I feel a little strange trying to put the um, aerial charge in there. So I left that out, but you can determine whether you want to put that in or not. <clears throat> so yeah, I think that kind of completes it. I think this is a good revisit on Blood of Primates and covering the different types with their ancestry and giving you two bonus um, races in the process there. Maybe you're playing Serpent Skull and somebody dies and there's a unique opportunity there to play one of these maybe. Or maybe it's going to be a Skull and Shackles game and, you know, all manner of things can be uh, met easily within that region. So, but if you want to explore this even further, um, which I'm sort of debating on right now, it may be uh, doing up the high... Gorillon, Gorillon, the uh, four arm, yeah, four armed white ape. Uh, this one would be the high one though, not the regular one, because that doesn't have any uh, high intelligence. But if you look at the D20 PF PFSRD uh, for Gorillon, uh, you'll find them there, and then you'll find the variant, which is the high uh, Gorillon, and. Um, there's a lot, a lot of interest in eco ecology stuff there. Um, so, I was thinking about maybe making one of these and have it a uh, comparable racial level to that of a dro no, uh, drow noble. Uh, yes, the RP would cost would be ridiculous, uh, outrageous, but it would be there nevertheless. Uh, for those that want to play NPCs, uh, the, the GM, DM, whoever, uh, that wants to make that as an NPC uh, or enemy and wants to use PC stats or something like that. Um, or for those games that are really, really high in their uh, power and trying to introduce a new character where the characters are already high enough at whatever. So they could sl uh, slot this one e in easily. Or for those that just play Dro or drow nobles you know this might this might be one so i'm going to explore that a little bit later here and see what i can come up with but already the rp looks uh sick um also going into some homebrew territory there we're trying to determine uh racial point uh cost for magical beasts since that's not in the advanced race guide uh i've already come to some conclusions on that or a magical beast i would say uh be a four points there for the RP and then um, if they're going to be something like awakened animals uh, then give a subtype there for augmented animal with a cost of 2 RP there if you're curious about that um, Eater of Elves uh, they are awakened di uh, dire apes uh, featured in the Pathfinder's rival guide uh, 
that's how they are listed as magical beast but also uh, subtype as augmented animal so I would say total cost there is six um, yeah if you were to do the high gurilon if I'm saying that name right uh, they don't list the augmented animal even though I believe there are a awakened creature but when they get awakened and they turn into a magical beast so there's some word in there uh, that sort of applies two different meanings maybe there or maybe three different meanings uh, but anyway if you wanted to go with what is exactly given in the, in the description of the beast theory um, you could go magical beast for 4 RP and then martial training for 2 RP uh, without even listing the uh, subtype there and the martial training being that they are proficient with a certain set of weapons and a certain set of armors and that they are intelligent or since they can use those so that will be explored later sometime uh, but what would be very interesting as I as I briefly ran, uh, ramble about um, in the high gr uh, Gurulan, uh there's a entry there about their maiden rituals and they mentioned uh, that they sometimes will meet with orcs producing something of legend known as a white orc that's very interesting that that, that is a really uh, keen uh, observation there uh, I've been playing with that upon trying to maybe introduce that an orc with four arms. I mean, you already got that in uh, Beastary 4 with the Kasatha. Uh, that Thark type of uh, race. Which I'm actually going to redo at some point here. Uh, make it more of a uh, John Carter from Mars sort of a race. Uh, perhaps to go with um, Iron Gods AP. Um, but the White Orc would be a nice rival for that, for, for that race. Uh... Right now, I think they might be around, uh, I want to say 15 RP. Uh, you're taking away Ferocity, I believe. Give them multi arm which is like a plus 8. Um, with the Paragon Ability Score modifiers. Um, but there's a lot of things to consi uh, consider with that. What what parent traits to take and what anc ancestry traits. I think it should m mainly be uh, orc which is a few uh, fusions with the gur uh, Gurulan. So I'd say mainly make it uh, orc using an example from the Ogrelan part orc part ogre. You can use that as sort of your 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 base your your frame your framework for trying to uh, create the white orc, so maybe I'll put some out about about this little later on, where it'll be a, a re revisitation. So, four armed orc. That's really interesting. So, anyway, we're getting about thirty minutes over thirty minutes here. I think I've talked about a lot of stuff here. Thank you for sticking around. Uh, the few people here that do. Uh, really liking hearing from a few people here. Uh, it's a very obscure channel, uh, but just hearing some comments, uh, again, some feedback from you has, 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 has been great. Even if it's very, very short, one or two sentences, uh, just let me know that you're enjoying it, or if you have any questions, requests, anything like that, uh, I do look forward to those. Uh, I'll try and help you out any way I can. And... Maybe along the way, everyone's face palming. So, uh, just with how wild and crazy these things can can get, especially for strict core rule book people only. But uh, yeah, that's all I got. So, I get this posted. See you.